<laughs> Man, it's like an episode of the Angry Beavers over here. Here, 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 here. Hey, what's going on, you fabulous EXO coming at you here, enjoying the morning sunlight, staying busy on the big build. Today is another super important episode, man. We got 1218s to power, and the battery tray is still bottomless. We've got a floor to build, fellas. In our last video, we packed in a whole bunch of fun stuff, designing, customizing, and building a massive car audio amp rack. Capable of housing well over 100,000 watts, the old girl came out like a dream, too. The only problem now is the dang floor back there. She's still exposed and unfinished with like 600 feet of speaker wire. So today's the day we tackle the job. But instead of just building a simple false floor, the design I'm thinking will incorporate a cool little hidden tunnel inside to act as an air duct because luckily underneath the vehicle there's this random hollow spot that's just screaming to become an intake. It's not very wide though so a couple fans would be the max but for an intake it's about where we need to be anyways. You see the goal is to have the rear compartment be at negative pressure but have lots of airflow. That means having so much air exhausting that fresh air is constantly getting sucked through every nook and cranny and to facilitate that process even more since dust isn't an issue, that's where the hidden intake comes into play. On paper, the current exhaust rate for the rear is around 750 CFM, so realistically we want to stay within 30 to 50% of that to maintain good negative pressure while still moving tons of air. Anything between 2 to 400 CFM should do the trick and keep ratios in check. With the flow reversed, like how some suggested to flip them, the area would then become a positive pressure environment, and in this unique case, that means the air inside could technically never be cooler than the ambient temperature already inside because instead of drawing from a cooler source like outdoors, it would draw from behind here within itself. And in this scenario, the only access point to the outside world there would be right in front of a 400 horsepower engine exhaust. Whew, no thanks. This direction definitely works best for me. Now with all that broken down, let's get this show on the road and have some fun, shall we? Let's just go for it. You can see how this was acting like a bowl this whole time, collecting all that foam we've been trimming for like two years. That's great. I'll have to go in right here with a quick hole so I can make this corner. No making that radius in metal. <laughs> nice and clean. This is simply the access point to get inside the small hollow space hidden underneath. So from the top, you can't see any of that. So the next plumbing job will be super incognito, baby. It worked out pretty good because you can see that stop gusset went right to the side of it. So we still maintain all of our strength in this little area. I'm going to be putting a little uh, plug in right here. So it'll basically fill up this hole. But now we can move on to trying to get this thing mounted. There's a little bit of a slant there. Let me show you. You can see how the floor goes up right here. So we're gonna have to extend this out with a little platform that bridges that gap. Doesn't even need to have too much overkill, really. We're just trying to mount these fans. a lot with a good old jigsaw. This thing's the most versatile tool in my shop, I swear. 
Just laid down a quick coat of paint on all the exposed areas. Better be safe than sorry since this will be covered. There's gonna be that access point down there, but it made sense to at least cover the bare metal. I got rid of some of the extra paint I had on my brush back here because when I did round that corner with the jigsaw, I scratched a little bit right there, so I coated her just in case. Also just drilled out some holes for the fan. Should mount in pretty nice and snug in here. I just broke the camera lens off. I was thinking I was all cool, getting some awesome angles covering from the top. At least I got the shot though, but I came out of there and hit it with my shoe. I think the easiest way to approach this is probably just use some two by fours and lay them flat since the thickness of our tubing is exactly that. Hey, I'm gonna bring Dr. Seuss over here and we'll pretty much guide it over this way without obstructing the airflow. There'll be some additional inline fans to really help guide all that cooler air throughout the space. But for right now, we gotta really get started on this floor. So let's go rip down some boards and get this whole area situated. Just grabbed a little piece of foam I had from an amplifier box laying around. I think it would be perfect for getting a nice little radius from the edge of the socket to the back of the waveguide. That was waveguide. <laughs> I mean like air guide or whatever you'd want to call it. Just trying to help it reach its destination, you know what I'm saying? So we could get a nice little curve like that, put some expanding foam in there, and maybe even some CA glue or temporary placement, get the best angle, and then make it permanent. nice freaking curve going into the back and believe it or not that foam holds it in really securely I just had a little bit of a blowout here because I brought my freaking my blower and I didn't realize it was still wet and it freaking came flying out so I had to do one more application right down there but besides that we're ready to start doing the same damn thing that we did up back right here up front that way it just creates a beautiful little free floating platform
It's like an episode of the Angry Beavers over here, chomping through like no one's business. He eats through real nice, so she's super flat across the plane, can't be any happier. And now it's like that fingernail biting moment when we're about to add the floor piece. So I did one more thing for future proofing, just in case we want to do any underground wiring back here with this nice little channel. So we're ready to measure out the floor piece. I'm gonna do one final measurement from the front to the back with the door closed. That way we just bang through all the cuts, boom, boom, boom. more glues and screws and we've got the front face plate all done I did some extra sanding in there because we had to push that piece out probably just like a eighth of an inch to accommodate the angle of the fans that are hidden inside and from the top everything's real beautiful contour to the vehicle the door shuts perfectly closes so dang close but I had a little uh something over here to the left that I wanted to show you it freaking tickled me pink look who's sleeping inside my subwoofer right now Good old Norfleet. I don't wanna, I don't wanna <laughs> interrupt his slumber. But I looked over and I started made, what a beautiful cat right there. I made my, made my morning. So right now, we gotta keep the project rolling because I gotta try to get this done before the end of the week for the little showtime show. I at least want something for people to look at, something new that they haven't seen. And this is gonna be it with the Herculiner. We got the supplies ready to go. I'm just gonna go haywire and just do probably two coats. I did three up here, but since this is the, the floor, it's really gonna be mostly hidden. So I think two coats will be just fine. So let's go ahead and get that started right now. I think this is one of those moments where I need to be pinched or smacked because I'm kind of going a little crazy right now. The contours, the matching, the weather stripping. It's like I didn't even build it. I know I try to do my best always, but trying to get that extra little detail in the end has always been a struggle for me. And it looks like something you'd see at a show. And I am so over the hill with it. it. We got the nice little contour in the front to match the angle of the dangle for the fans. And when I turn that on, it is a beast. Whoops, <laughs> sorry, I just spit. It roars, we're at like 1400 foot per second, but I don't dare turn it on right now because the dust 
absolutely goes flying and I don't want that desk to settle in that beautiful finish work. So we got our buddy Remy here to test the other fans here on the side. We had a lot of curiosity in our last video about these three on the side. Some people had their doubts with it firing toward the side, but I did a little bit of a wave guide. So we're gonna cue it up with a quick little uh, excess power battery. We got the wires all ready to go. So let's go ahead and see what the CFN rating is out of this opening right here. Should be pretty interesting. like we're hovering right around the 1100 feet per second, no, which is per second, per minute mark. So with that figure, we can actually calculate because of the size of this open, the exact CFM. We're about five, six feet away. And of course it has that one obstruction to go through. So I'm pretty impressed with how it's performing. So let's go ahead and do a quick math problem. Not too shabby, huh? 650 CFM, you can't ask much more. What, Remy, what was this like? It was 17 by five, but what was the square footage on that? 0.589. Yeah, so that's definitely not too bad of an opening right there. It's freaking pumping and dumping. Just the fact that it's five feet away, so I mean like to get that sort of fraction of what the fans are rated at, impressive. And eventually all that ventilation will be plumbed through with some exhaust ports right here. I have it all planned out. I want to try to get it done before the show. It's a lot of building, man. We've still got that back plug to do. So I've been stressing. I want some eye candy for people to see. So it's like, man, listen, what do I got? Just listen, don't stress. The show is on Saturday. Bring it out how it is. You've done so much work to this van. Even at the stage that it's at, people are gonna appreciate all the work that you've done to this thing to get it to where it even is today. So you're saying maybe people would appreciate seeing it mid-progress? Yeah. I would. Heck yeah, man. I mean, I do. That's kind of like what I live for. So you know what? I guess sometimes it is really important just to sit back, smell the roses, and just have some fun. And that goes for anybody out there too. I mean, if you've ever been scared or afraid or nervous to go to a show, like it's not the end of the world if your build isn't at the stage that you want it at because it's yours. You should be proud of what you built, and what you've made. You may make some new friends if you go to a show, like you never know. Somebody else may be in the same stage that you're at. So, I mean, if you, if you just go out, hang out, have fun, What's the worst that could happen? Greg, right, couldn't have said any better myself, man. You're even inspiring me over here. Good. I am gonna definitely show out at the show. I'm gonna come out with my confidence there, even though I'm, you know, a little bit, you know, a little bit nervous. Remy, you explained it perfectly. I'm gonna just have a good time. It's not finished and it's not the end of the world if someone posted online and said, oh, look at that. It's all what I love to do. So thank you guys for watching. We got the floor done. We got the ventilation hidden. Oh, and I just stepped in a bunch of Herc Maderp on my shoe. That's going to be good for the living room carpet. All right. So until the next video, this is EXO and Remy signing out. We will see you hopefully at the Showtime show. We're going to make this a whole thing a couple times a year. Oh, maybe twice. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. We're already there and we're already feeling it. So until the next video, this is EXO and Remy signing out. Yeah, 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 yeah.